Um, hi, everyone. My name is Joey Katz. I'm the director of special programming for Boston Jewish Film. And thank you for joining us for the first of two live programs today, part of the fourth annual Boston Israeli Film Festival. Um, we are thrilled to have you all joining us, and we're thrilled to have this uh, conversation about the fantastic film, That Orchestra with the Broken Instruments. Um, we are going to uh, be in conversation with the director of the film, Yuval Hameri, as well as the film subject, uh, the composer who helped uh, bring all of this music to life, uh, Tom Cohen. Um, and the uh, conversation will be moderated by our new artistic director, Lisa Gossels. Um, so yeah, thank you all for joining us. I am gonna disappear for a little bit and hand it over to you all. Thank you, Joey. Um, hi everyone. And thank you for joining us from greater Boston and beyond for this special live Q and A. Welcome you Val and Tom from Tel Aviv and Brussels. I'm so looking forward to this conversation. I'm gonna start by sharing um, some brief bios of Yuval and Tom and some first takeaways on Yuval's film and Tom's work. We'll then dive into a Q&A, just the three of us. Um, and then I'll be sharing your questions and comments that you can put in the Q&A panel on the bottom of your screen, not the chat, but the Q&A panel. So hi Yuval, uh, you are a multidisciplinary artist working in film, theater and performance. Your art explores the poetry of everyday life and the relationship between matter and meaning, humor and pain. In 2012, your short film, I think this is the closest to how the footage looked, won the prize for best short documentary at the Sundance Film Festival. You have five major credits on this, your second film, director, producer, writer, editor, and cinematographer, Mazel Tov. Um, Hi, Tom. You are the founder, arranger, chief conductor, and musical director. You're all underachievers on this chat. <laughs> um, I, I so, just noticed that I have only four. Uh, yeah, really. I think, five. Yeah. yeah, I think I meant to give you a fifth one. You're a really good human being, but then it, so is Yuval. So we'll, we'll come up with a new title at the end. Um, so Tom is the founder, arranger, chief conductor, and musical director of the Jerusalem East and West Orchestra featured in Yuval's movie. You are internationally recognized for creating Levant music, a new musical language using Eastern and Western musical styles. Classically trained and steeped in the music of North Africa and Arab countries, you bring Levant music to orchestras and ensembles as diverse as the Israeli Philharmonic and orchestras you founded in Israel, Morocco, Belgium, and Canada. So welcome again. Thank you for being at the fourth annual Boston Israeli Film Festival. Thank you for having us. Great to be here. Um, so that orchestra with the broken instruments is a very special film. I've now seen it twice that offers a window into a very pure and honest and raw creative process of making and creating a new language of music with normally discarded instruments across ages and religions and cultures and backgrounds and barriers, culminating in a single and singular performance, a one night only performance. As I was watching the documentary and seeing the, the musicians and composers and you, Tom, listening deeply to each broken instrument, discovering what each instrument or musician could say or communicate or was capable of, it made me think that this whole film and this piece, Shalem is Sweet for Broken Instruments, is also a glimpse of what conflict resolution can, can look like and, and how, at least for a moment, what living together in peace can look like. It's, it's uh, I mean, it's very interesting what you said, because in a way, the process of listening to every instrument by itself is crucial in order to try and make order within this big thing that happens, all these 100 people together, some of them are playing uh, 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 broken trumpets and some of them are playing uh, uh, empty gum uh, uh, boxes. <laughs> and, and the thing is really that if, if I try to, to look at it through the eyes of conflict resolution, it does teach us something about the fact that the, eventually the important thing is the macro. 
eventually the important thing is the outcome is, is making this whole thing breathe together and work together in an organic way. In order to get that, you have no other way but going detail by detail and, and, and solving them one by one unless, unless you cannot, I mean, the micro is not important at all, but if you don't deal with it, you cannot get to the macro in any way. And you've all really showed us that as that part of the process with Maya talking about not rain, but one drop of water um, so clearly. One other little reflection, and I'm so thrilled I want you both to dive in. Um, one of the things I really appreciated, and Maya speaks to this in the second movement of the film, uh, is the idea that the older amateur musicians, she said, they are not amateur musicians. They've all accomplished something in life. And I'm getting moved now because I feel young, but I'm in the second stage, let's say. So um, that they're really bringing something more, their life experience. And it made me think about your piece, Tom, and also this movie, Yuval, that this is also about not discarding people in society, you know? That was just something that resonated deeply. Here are instruments that might be discarded. And Yuval, I know you have one with you right here. And so, you know, I just appreciated all the diversity, all the, all the inclusion, this whole feeling I got from the film. Is this a question? Actually, it doesn't have to no. be at all. It does no, 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 not no, no. have okay. to be. If you want to speak, uh, we have plenty of questions. Um, do no, you want no, to speak I, to that? It's I, just I, I, tot I totally agree um, uh, with your uh, impression. I, I think for me, I was very touched uh, even before the concert was, was even exist, when I just heard about it. Uh, when I heard uh, the idea, Michal, uh, my partner, uh, to, to the directing of the film and also the creator of this, uh, this concert, um, when she told me that her idea of create, creating a symphony for broken music, uh, broken instruments, I thought to myself, this, this is so touching because I love, I love disabilities. Uh, we are all disabled in many, many ways. And, and we, most of the time we try to show, to hide our, uh, our um, broken parts. And this idea to let this, the, the brokenness shine through a concert and to, to call people to, to hear it, it I said to myself that I want to be part, somehow part of this process and to document the, um, the attempt uh, to, to make the final, the final piece because I thought that uh, the way towards this uh, end result would be very, very um, touching. I, I, I want to add something on that, even though we are just in the first question and for sure we will, we will ruin all the time for all the rest of the questions. It's just that I, I think, and again, I, I, I'm still, I, I'm, I'm, I'm mixing together your question now and the, the first question about conflict resolution, because, because you can learn a lot from the process that we had there. I guess I learned a lot from the process anyway. And, and the thing is really that when you write for orchestra, you write for every instrument specifically. So every instrument get, got his own line within the, the score that the conductor has that is constructed of many, many, many different lines of music. And then, and then in order to make this concert work, what we had to do uh, eventually, and that was through the process, through the musical creative process, is to uh, understand that the orchestra is basically, we should not think of it like a normal orchestra, but we should think of it of, instruments that can play melodies, instruments that can play rhythm, and instruments that can just make noise. And then when you have each one of them uh, uh, cleared, like its, its job is very clear, you can start really composing for it and, and because each one of these three big families understands what they do at any given moment. And I think that this is really a, a part of what, if, if I can try and translate into musical concepts, what Yuval was saying, this is exactly the thing. If we try to put aside our broken parts or the parts of us that can, the only thing that they can produce is noise, 
if we try to put them on the side, we will never get to anything because uh, uh, we are not only these melodic uh, creatures. We are we are also very rhythmical and very noisy, and we need to we, we need to somehow uh, and, and our conflicts are the same, and we need to somehow be able to look at these three for each of the sides and find how they breathe together in order to move on. Maybe. <laughs> Tom, where did this big, crazy, beautiful idea come from of shalom, the wholeness, which can mean wholeness or in peace? And just the whole thing we've already spoken about. And then from whence this crazy, beautiful, brave idea of culminating in a one night only performance. As a documentarian, I have to say it is so brave. I could never imagine one night only. Like you've all seen this film only once. So I think we owe a debt of gratitude for you, Tom, to saying yes to Yuval and that Yuval got to document this. Um, First of all, I have to compliment Yuval. Uh, um, I, I was so, I'm a man that is very aware of a camera when it's when it's put in front of him. And besides the, the interviews, like besides the testimonies, I was not aware at any moment that I'm filming. And it's not because I did not see the equipment. It's because something about Yuval made me feel very much at ease and at home. And I, 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 I'm very much, I'm very much, I don't know if I can say that, my English is not good enough to say what I want to say in a nice way. I'm very proud at, at, at the outcome because I see all the people that were there and I see that throughout all these segments that you see, each one of them comes out exactly like I saw them and not like a character in a movie that Yuval manipulated somehow. And this is amazing to me. Uh, now, now, I forgot what your question was, but, but, I, but complimenting Yuval is also something important, I guess. <laughs> Absolutely. Yuval, do you want to answer before I re -answer? It's all good. Um... Um... You talked about the the one night uh, one night event. Um, I think I think yeah. I think first of all, uh, I don't know exactly what I want to say. There is something. There is something, there is something very. The, the idea originally was an idea from Philadelphia, where where they did this project of broken instruments playing music. The only thing is that in Philadelphia, they did it with contemporary music, meaning a, a very small audience to begin with that are very much interested in different sound excess and, and, and musical landscapes or sonar, sonar um, landscapes and all kinds of words like this, which are very far from what I do. And to be honest, when I was approached by, by the festival, by Mekudeshet Festival to make this project, mm. I hated the idea. I thought it's very bad. I didn't understand mm. why we should, why you should make such an effort. Let's just make a very cool concert with many people, with stars and great music, and it will be fun. We can, I mean, we can push our agenda also with famous people. It would be even better maybe. Um, and then eventually, but then eventually I understood that Nomi Fort is the, the woman that thanks to her, both Yuval and I are sitting here and having this chat with you, uh, the woman that made it happen, uh, um, that facilitated all of this, uh, she really saw far and she understood that by bringing me into this project, she, she decided that this project will be communicative, that it will be entertainment as well. It will be artistic, but it will be entertaining at the same time. And, and that is why, and, and there are so many people that, that contributed to the success of it. The one night thing is really because it is impossible to bring all these people with all these instruments, with all this amplification, with all this stage that was especially built for the event. I can tell you from, from my point of view, since that event until now, it's true we had a small pandemic on the way. I don't know if you got it in the US, if you heard about it, but, oh. but, uh, but since then and until now, I'm in constant communication with different bodies, different organizations, different people about recreating this experience. And it's, and for now, I mean, everybody are very much willing to make it happen. It doesn't seem like it's going to happen. <laughs> Hold everything. Okay. What was, I, I just- But, but, no, 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 but, I'm, a, but I'm a believer. I want to say something about it because I, I, I reminded what I want what I wanted to say. The the 
the last shot I decided to put in the film mm. is uh, Moshe, the delivery guy that takes the, the instruments back to his car. And it's, uh, it's for me, the temporary of the temporariness of this event is, is part of the, of the essence because I think that to make change, to create a um, peace, to create a, a, you cannot recreate things. You have to work all the time and, and, and be relevant to what happens now. So if, if the concert is a symbol for, symbol for something, um, it should be started again from, from the beginning right now, because, because uh, yeah, we created like microcosmos for uh, four days and it was very, very fun to be together and make music and, and, and talk. Um, but the reality is that the conflict is something very, very complicated. And, and the city is very, very complicated and people are going back to their, uh, their houses and their places and, and the instruments are now not playing. So in order to make this music, we need to, to, to get up each morning and, and, and create music, um, something like this. <laughs> um. So the first thing I just want to say is Yuval, I mean, sorry, yes, Yuval, but Tom, please do this again and please come here because the first thing I thought, um, and Yuval and I were talking before, you have a keyboard back there, but it made me want, I play the piano, but I'm not a musician, but I want to be part of this. And I think it's so powerful, the work, and I appreciate how ephemeral it was, how not temporary it was for that. And if you get invitations or you're going to be coming here, let us know if we can do something. Um, probably on a smaller okay. scale, but it's extraordinary. Um, I just wanted to ask. Uh, you, we don't do smaller scale. So. Oh, you don't do smaller <laughs> scale. Okay, we'll talk outside of this. Um, I just wanted to dive in with two questions for you. I want to, to me, um, and then we're going to start, I think, having questions. I already see a wonderful one from our guests who are tuning in. Um, for me, it feels like Shalem, the musical piece, and Yuval, your film, that orchestra with the broken instruments, they feel in some ways like artistic leaps of faith. And I wanted to kind of dig in to the creative process you both had. Um, Yuval, you were telling me right before this that filmmaking is in, in a way like making music. And with so many people to follow, you probably had 110 people, you and Michal and Chen, your co-cinematographer, I'm just curious about the process of how you told the story and if you ended up making the film you expected. Anything you want to share? I know that was probably very big. Anything you want to share? Yeah, so uh, it was really a quest to, to understand how we want to tell this story because we could choose one character and follow it through the concert, but we felt it's, it's wrong. We need the, the diversity uh, the polyphony of people and at start I didn't know what what I'm going to do and I was just filming like what I said to Hen my partner for filming I said to him he said what what to what what to shoot what to film <laughs> and I said to him uh, we are looking for cracks we are staying here and we are looking for the cracks in the whole, in the whole uh, situation. And after, and I didn't know how the film will look. And when I sat in the editing room, it was the first month of editing was very, very frustrating. I had a lot of fragments, which I loved all of them, but they did not get along for, uh, it, it, it was not a story. It was just fragments of, of, of beautiful moments, but I didn't know how to, how to do it. And I had a um, few breakout moments. Uh, one of them was when I realized that the 
three parts of the piece would be three parts of the of the film three chapters and it gave me a structure and and then I think when I started to combine um, musical parts with uh, stories of people I realized that this story could go on because each each uh, story of a person like it's like riding the wave of of the music and we carry and then the music carries all the stories towards the ending um, and another thing I realized only after a few screenings when the movie was already out is um, how important was the uh, the the part of uh, Tom as a character in the film I, I realized that uh, somehow for me he's the the narrator he takes he gives us I think as an audience as, as the audience uh, someone to trust to follow because there it's so it's so messy the whole process is so messy and I think that the the idea that that uh, Tom your voice is consistent through the film and you have this uh, at the same time I can see how you are very not sure of anything but very very certain sure that you're doing it. So uh, I think it's also a message to the audience. Um, also some guidance through the film that makes uh, it um, um, lo logic, not logical, um, make it make, make sense. It really does. Um, you have segued so perfectly into the question that I had for Tom. Um, thank you, Yuval. That was so, I was just thinking when I go to museums to see art, I love getting on the headsets, some explanation. You know, I, I can walk through once and see pieces of art, but this conversation is adding so much depth and complexity and excitement um, to me, at least, and I'm sure for everybody. So thank you for these insights. Um, Tom, in watching the movie, I felt all I felt all the responsibilities that were weighing on you in your position, including fear that you've all just mentioned. And I'm quoting something from you early on. What if the concept is stronger than the final concert? And then as we move along in this five day journey, we also see you, Tom, in your bliss. You, one hour into the movie, you're conducting and moving like a dancer to Judu Tasso's third movement. And we see that again on the one night final performance, the one night only. How do you move through fear when it comes to creativity and what keeps you in your bliss and why do you do this? Why this? Well, first of all, thank you for all the kind words. I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I mean, this Q&A started with you reading my resume. I'm still blushing from there. And now this, I, I don't know how to continue this. Um, so thank you very much, um, whoever asked this question. That's um, me. So for me, but we're going to get some great ones. Thank you very much then. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, dear Lisa. Um, I think I think that I, in a way, I learned a lot about myself and my work process watching this film. Um, the three, if, if I need to answer you like very um, uh, organized, I can say this. There are three uh, reasons that I think create both uh, uh, the answer to your question and the, the, the feeling that Yuval described of me as the narrator. Uh, and these three things are, first of all, it is very clear to everyone that I, uh, that I, am, I know the material better than anybody else in the room, not in a condescending way, but rather in a way that try to give example. Like I know I know every note, I know at any moment what is going to happen and I, what I want to happen and how I want it to happen. And, and I try to, to push the people together with me to, to that direction. For example, telling them, I don't care if you're professionals or amateurs. Now we go to the moment where we are playing to people. We want people to go out of here and say, wow, that's the best concert I've seen in my life. Regardless of what's your agenda, what's our agenda, what's the story, what, uh, this is not important anymore. Now it's time to dance. So, so this is one. Second is really familiarity. 
I watched the film and I was surprised noticing, which is something that I didn't do. I mean, apparently it's a part of my tools, but it's not something that I did consciously. I talked to each one of the people out of the 120 people around me, orchestra plus team, I talked to each one of them by their first name. I never go like, excuse me, you or flute or sir or madam. I'm always with the name of the person which creates this feeling of, of, of uh, unity. And, and I was very surprised to see that actually. It, I was really impressed by that ability, which I did not think that I have and I do not have on, in, in normal life. Um, the third thing is really about, I've in, in my life, both my professional life and my personal life, but that's a different story. I've never, from a very young age, I did not let reality uh, set uh, set the they like define life for me. So so I've always known. I've always had a feeling, and I thank my parents for for putting this seed inside me. This feeling of 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 privilegedness uh, uh, I deserve. So so whatever I believe in, I just need to work in hard enough towards it, and it will happen. So this is something that is very much rooted in me, and for me. Uh, it is, it's true. I don't know how it will happen uh, musically, but I am sure that all these people will out of the hall and at least a significant percentage of them will say, that's the best concert I've seen in my life. Thank you. We have a question. Thank you so much. We have a question from Penny. You're welcome. I, sorry, sorry, I will just, I will rephrase it because they, the thing is not the big, the good concert. The, the, the thing is that if you want to change, you need to believe in something and go for it. If you wait, or if you think of the reasons that might make it not work, you will not change anything. That, that was the point, not the, not the applause. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so we have a question which is wonderful from Penny Schwartz. Can you talk about the young Palestinian siblings um, who spoke English, including the extraordinary young woman who recited that poem, who feels like a Palestinian Amanda Gorman? Um, was that a surprise that she wrote the poem um, on the night of the rehearsal? It was anything totally- Anything to share us, yeah, anything to share. First of all, I really like the, the, those three, three, kids they are amazing and and they were really yeah I, I just I, I just I you know I eventually I did have to choose people uh, people to interview from the whole orchestra and I didn't interview all of them but those three uh, there's the there's a shot in the film which is actually not from the rehearsals it was from um, from it was the first time I time I saw them the three of them they were uh, uh, standing next to a keyboard and they uh, were helping each other and I put it in in it it was me in the in the day they they meet the fair the first like how do you call it it was a test before uh, just a meeting day before the rehearsal started three months and before. I hmm? Three months before the so I saw them as a group together uh, at that day, and I inserted this shot into uh, like it's in a rehearsal. Uh, that was me watching them at first, and I and I went to talk to them. So uh, yeah, I really really liked uh, each one of them and the and the way they came together. Um, and uh, Tala, which wrote uh, this poem. Um, she just came to us. Uh, I knew about it uh, from th th that morning. She thought she came in the morning and she said to me, "I wrote a poem and I want to read it." And uh, and I, I, she wrote it at night before the concert. Um, and yeah, so so we organized briefly. We organized uh, uh, before uh, Tom. Um, before Tom was sending all the orchestra to the to the stage, we let her read it, and we were all shocked because um, because she said a lot of a lot of the intentions that uh, all the people that imagined this concert 
uh, had this idea, ideas, these words, but we never said it. We never said, we invited people and we say, let's uh, uh, make uh, music for broken instrument. We didn't say anything about conflict and about, um, uh, let's say, uh, I, I don't know, about identities of different people. Mm -hmm. It was just in the air. And she wrote very, very beautiful um, uh, perspective on what we did. And it was inspiring to see that she had this um, experience. I mean, this for her. And she, she said, it's like uh, I get, and she told me, I get a broken instrument, and these are, this is what I have to work with. And it's <laughs> like my life. Keilo, my, my, Keilo, I said Keilo, it's in Hebrew. <laughs> like. Hey, it's an Israeli film festival, so some people understand. Uh, I must say that for me, <clears throat> the most impressive thing and her, and her poem is very impressive is not the fact that she wrote this impressive i mean i know the girl she's an amazing girl obviously she can write and obviously she can do other stuff amazingly the thing that amazed me and made me proud the most is the fact that it was so clear for her that it's not only okay that everybody wants her to read it in front of everyone she didn't come and say will it be okay she like she she told us okay so i wrote this poem and i want to read it to everybody and we were like, yeah, cool, of course, but but <laughs> but but the, the thing itself, the fact that for her, I mean, think of her situation again, being Palestinians with all these strange people. Some of them are Jews, some of them are Muslims, some of them are Christians, some of them are other stuff. And we come from all over the world, and each one speaks a different language, and each one has different ideas. And if you put a a, a, a ballot there, you don't know what what kind of strange outcome you would have. And still, she felt completely at place and at ease, and 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 in in a good place to 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 share with us her most intimate moment from last night. And for me, that was the the, the big thing about it. So incredible. Um, Penny asks, "What is her first name?" I know you're not using last names, and there are no lo lower thirds. But who is a poet? What's her first name? Tala. Tala. T A L A. Thank you. And um, it seemed, so Ken Shulman had this question. I had assumed actually, Tom, that you had recruited the musicians, the non-musicians to your orchestra. Yuval, were you part of the casting? Did you, how did this all happen? The casting of the whole orchestra? Well, yeah. It sounded I, like you were saying you were part of it. Both Yuval and I were not a part of it in any way. Oh. Uh, I can I can partially take credit for these two brother three brothers I mean, three siblings because uh, Sophie, a violinist from my orchestra, is their teacher, and she asked me if she could invite them because she thinks they would really enjoy. So, but but in general, there were posters hanged all over Jerusalem. The people of the festival again. I I told you. Uh, mm -hmm. When we talked privately, Mekudeshet Festival is really the only place I've known, not only in Israel, but in the whole world, that allows you such artistic conditions to work in. They did the work, they went to all the different sectors in, in, in the Jerusalemite society, from the West and from the East, from, from, from obvious places and from forgotten places, and, and really try to convince, to talk to people to take part in this experience. Uh, and that and that basically Yuval, um, Yuval entered the thing. I, I'm not sure when I <clears throat> I'm involved in the thing musically until these five days. My only my only issue that I'm dealing with is music and concept. And then these five days, I meet the people. This is where I mean we had a meeting three months before, but it was like more for them, less for us. I'm, I really meet them uh, during these five days, and it's really thanks to the to the people of Mekudeshe that that made that created this this uh, uh, really really impressive uh, gathering of of different uh, personalities. And I want to say something. There was no um, uh, how do you say uh, auditions. auditions. Everyone there was. Every person that wanted to participate is, was part of the, am I right, Tom? Was yeah, you're right. my only demand was, and this is also with regards to what we talked about conflict solving, is that the orchestra will not be only broken instrument, but that you will have my Jerusalem Orchestra East and West playing their own instruments inside. So there will be 30 people out of this 100, 
that can really hold a, a musical structure, giving me the ability to use the drums, the bass, the percussion, the, the violins, and, 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 and the, and the uh, uh, soloists on Arab instruments. Uh, but, but besides them, which are my, my other family, which I've been working with for the last 13 years, uh, everybody who wanted to join, joined. I just want to say um, one quick thing, which is that this whole creation between you and Yuval and everything we're hearing of, it feels like a way of living. You know, you've given us a way of living, a roadmap, something we should aspire to, or may we all do that. We have some questions in the chat. I just want to let everyone know that's tuning in. If you have comments or questions, this is the time. We have a few more minutes left, and I want we all want your voices to be heard if there's more that you want to share. So this is the time to go to the Q&A and write us if you want. Um, so Mary asks, outside of the film, this is a Tom question, is there a recording of the whole concert available for the public, or when will that be? There is a recording. Uh, there is also, I, I must say, there are two things. First of all, there, there is the whole movie, the whole concert mixed and edited somewhere in somebody's hard disk. <clears throat> it never came out. I hope it will come out one day. It's a, it's a beautiful experience, different, uh, different than the film. It's a musical experience, but it's also seeing it after you've seen the film is something different because you recognize all these characters and you see them very focused and like doing their thing. Uh, there is a recording of the, of the thing, uh, which uh, uh, Mekudeshet spread to their, uh, to their audience. Uh, I've shared it with you yesterday. I guess yeah. I didn't want to tell anybody. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's 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 it. I, I I don't know if I'm now saying this, uh, thinking out loud. I don't know if I'm supposed to, but let's say if you share it with other people, like I didn't give you permission or not give you permission. So do whatever you see fit. So if the person that asked that question would like to listen, please email me at lisa at bostonjfilm.org, and I will do that. Yeah. I would say that I'm trying to work uh, it's it's uh, it's I don't have uh, answers right now but I'm trying to arrange putting this piece on Spotify I'm trying to to talk with Mekudeshet about it because many many people want to hear it and I think it's it's something worth listening to in like in headphones uh, so uh, so I think that uh, I hope that if w once a month you will type that orchestra, uh, Shalem Orchestra on uh, Spotify, maybe uh, maybe it will uh, came up, come up uh, sometime. Thank you. Future. And we have one more question. I think we're gonna be, um, this could be our last question unless some other things come in right now. Oh, somebody said they'd love to listen to it. We'd all love to listen again. Um, what happened to the instruments? that last image, what happened to all the instruments that were collected? I know you have one right next to you, Yuval. I have one, behind I got you. it as a present uh, after the film came out. Uh, most of the instruments, uh, it's, they came from very different places. Uh, so some of them, if you have more information, Tom, you can tell, tell, tell us, but uh, I know that some of them were, uh, uh, went back to the um, all the, um, the the organizations that don't, that gave them. They they back in the in the storage room again. Oh, yeah, uh, it depends also, on the situation. Some of them were restored. Some of them were just sent back. Some of them, I think, just got kind of lost during the process. Uh, but the the. the the idea was in general to fix all of the instruments and to have kids learn how to play with them. Uh, doing it with all the instruments was really an ideal uh, aspiration that could not be met, but we did do it with a big chunk of the instruments. Uh, and specifically, um, there was one of the players in the orchestra is have is, he has uh, have a workshop of. Uh, fixing instruments uh, uh, with the uh, teenagers. He works with teenagers, I think at risk, um, and, and teaches them how to, 
how to fix instruments. So few of the instruments in the concert were taken to his work workshop. Uh, and it's also a sweet story. Thank you. Joey, I think I'm gonna um, have you come say hello again. Okay, I, I'm Good. back. Um, that was magic. Um, everyone, that was such a fantastic conversation. That was, it was a joy for me to just listen to. Um, I am sure that everyone tuning in to also feels the same. Um, thank you so much, um, Yuval and Tom for joining us for this festival. Um, hopefully maybe something in the near future, we can have you in Boston in person. Um, and thank you, Lisa, for moderating the conversation. Um, just a reminder to you all, um, uh, tuning in that this is actually the first of two live events we have today. There's one at three o'clock for, uh, Cinema Sabea. Um, and also just a reminder for those who didn't tune in, you can tell those who didn't tune in today um, that one, this fantastic film is available to stream um, until March 30th. Um, and this uh, conversation will be available um, after the festival on YouTube. Um, and yeah, and something will happen with the, with the music. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how we're gonna, <laughs> distribute that, but uh, that will happen eventually, maybe. Um, so Yuval, Tom, Lisa, everyone tuning in, thank you so much for joining us and have a great night where you are and a great rest of the day where you are also. All right. Thank you very thank much, you. Ben. Thank you so Bye. much. Thank you and thank, thank you, you. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs>